So before we hit George's article, we're going to uh, sip on some of the else. worst, <laughs> worst <laughs> case I scenario. Saw it. I didn't want to yell at you, new guy. <laughs> I just saw beer in front of me. No wonder why the numbers kept spitting out, man. Uh, <laughs> and that is the worst case scenario right there. <laughs> Which is by Masthead. This is a 9.4 ABV. I don't have a lot of statistics on this because it's a very mysterious beer. Does Masthead but have a brewery in uh, North Olmsted? No, it's downtown. downtown it's Cleveland. amazing. It's, it's amazing. Actually, Gumby and I like to go there. Superior, for, for the record, it's I can tell in retrospect that that's 9.4% ABV. <laughs> 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 and he can confirm that. Oh, I have been there. It is nice. He yeah, has the statistics okay, to prove it. <laughs> it's superior. Yeah, that is a good one. Mass, that's awesome. They have great oh, yeah. pizza. Oh, oh yeah. great. Oh, uh, yeah, great yeah. oven pizza. Yeah, we've been over yeah. there two or three times now, haven't we? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Masthead's is awesome. We definitely enjoy that place. Where did we go for that one show that also didn't record good? Uh, oh, Noble Beast. Noble, Noble Beast. Beast. That was fun. That was Cheers. fun. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. I just want Gummy to edit. <laughs> <laughs> Not much editing on this one. <laughs> Ooh, see, now this is a good double buck. Hmm. That's pretty good. I almost punched you for some I, double block. Ooh. I'm sorry. I, I enjoy IPAs. I do. This is a definite, See, definitely a double IPA. I It's an imperial double, by the way. I like it punching me in the face. This is beautiful. This one does that, but it's, it's, it's still mm. tame enough for me. Because I'm not oh. a traditional IPA guy. But This is pretty good. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not piney. It's it's clear. Um, it's I got a slight haze to it. It mm-hmm. has golden color. Not a lot of head. Could be because it was in a growler, but uh, not a lot of head. But uh, I like the punch. I, I I love a good punch from an IPA, but it's a well balanced punch. Yeah, I was gonna say it's still smooth enough that you can just take. It, it doesn't down. keep punching you once it punches. Right, the first time, right. Which I think it's really thoughtful yeah. of it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I couldn't do this first, then the Natter Day. It would have jokes, right. jokes, right. jokes, jokes, <laughs> jokes, <laughs> jokes, jokes. Natter Day, Natter Day. <laughs> no, I'm not a beer person. I'm a wine person, and I actually kind of lo- like this beer. Mm-hmm. So that's not bad. It's a smooth IPA, and you will be glad to know we have a a wine episode coming up. So, Ooh. oh yeah. Oh. I am. Man, we're getting crazy on this show. New format. We're drinking different liquors. <laughs> right, wow. right. Yeah. Crazy. We're going all out. Crazy, oh crazy. <laughs> all right. Let's get this show on the road. I'm ready to send some heat coming all after right. you boys. Go ahead. All right. George is being too nice to us. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? I'm going to mix it up. We know You guys know what I'm doing. The audience is not. Are we done up. with this one? Have we exercised oh, no. this? Scroll up. <laughs> oh. the demon. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, and it's called The Problem with Faith, 11 Ways Religion is Destroying Humanity, mm. and just, and stop, keep going right there. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> George loves to hammer. Better brace yeah, yourselves, Yeah, you please. know what? I was just kind of reading the <laughs> others, and I'm just going to go with my top three here. Um, we'll, give it, we'll give it a whirl. All right. All right. Number one, the assumption of truth. Okay? Let me read. Most of the world's major religions each assume that theirs and their alone faith alone that is the absolute truth and refuse to concede that those traditions may be mistaken. Instead, they discover ways to force conflicting information to adapt to their own doctrine, no matter how effective the evidence is and actually disproving the rationality of their particular religion. And I always say this is my number one thing for bum bum bum. Aaron Ververka is the number one proprietor of this paragraph. This paragraph embodies juice and everything that he stands for in terms of religion. <laughs> you bring up the craziest thing that is clearly <laughs> spelt out in the Bible. And Juice will say, like, a thousand confusing sentences, make up some bullshit about how it's interpreted at the time that it came up and how it was lost in translation. And then be like, yeah, no, so really, when he raped the 20 females, really, (laughs) he fed them bread when they were poor and gave them a place to live. How do you not know that, George, you idiot? That's you. Well, there's this thing called context... And, like, I just feel like you fall back on that argument too much. And what I hate about it is that you never hear about context. You never hear about context when it's a good thing. 
Really? You know, yes. You never hear about it. It's only when like the Bible says something crazy that we no, have to I, go back and look. Well, know the context. Know the context. I literally gave you context of when it was good and it was not. Which one was it again? That no one cared. Gumby, so, do you remember? Because no one. Jesus, does. New Testament says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can take that mountain and it will dive into the ocean. That is hyperbole. That's not literal. That's fine. See. All right. There you go. But drowning the entire population of Earth. It contextually, it was a ba- changing it was a woman basin. into salt for turning around basin. and looking at a burning village. People needed condiments for their table. <laughs> I, like I mean, I would have been salt too. We can't look at a burn. Uh, Either way, we love village. and support. I would have been salty as shit. <laughs> we do love and support women <laughs> yeah, here. Know. We do love and support women. Jokes, <laughs> jokes, <laughs> jokes, jokes, jokes. Oh, <laughs> natter day, natter day. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, clearly, what that sentence was po- like poetical. Yeah. If that's a word. But I'm saying, like, whenever they say something serious and it's bad, like killing your own son or that man that gave up his daughter like whenever something crazy like that you're like do you want to think about the context like why isn't god like already perfect i don't understand why there's such a learning curve and because humans have not evolved i mean to make it quite simple we, he's perfect they're not yeah i mean thousands of years god ago is not perfect. We're that's, a, about that's a dirty in joke a, in a cultural drowning context. everybody on earth when you're that all was on Earth, all powerful, it was only inside the Mesopotamia basin. Still, still, that's bad. That's genocide. There was babies drowning in that water. Yeah, but there if, was children. If you take it children, women, context, people that hadn't sinned, in its own context. That's garbage. That's a horrible those person. People were that's worse Nephilim. than Hitler. That's worse than Hitler. In its own context. to kill everybody like that. That's a horrible thing. That's well, actually not worse than Hitler. He's, he's killed. But... What? Yeah, it is. How many people? What he killed like two million people or something? Oh, he would have killed far more if he had a chance. What? <laughs> oh, Hitler? Oh yeah, way oh, more than. I'm that. Just, right? Yeah, way more than. that. What? I'm just saying. How much did America? No, he just many, happened to how team up did, and uh, stop him. How many was it reported? How many people were on Earth, or how many in that Mesopotamia area did he kill? A couple oh, million, right? Oh no, no, not not, not even. I'm talking close. God. Not even I'm talking close. God. I'm not talking even God. Close. Not even close. I'm talking no. God. Yeah, not even close. Must be based. We're talking maybe a couple hundred thousand ish. That's pretty bad. I mean the number. Oh, the numbers. Hitler killed six <laughs> yeah. million yeah. Jews, yeah, and right. that doesn't include yeah, the go Poles ahead. Gonna, and the Germans I'm, and the Austrians. I'm going to follow the... that. I'm going to say it's <laughs> erroneous, but I mean, I'm just saying if he's supposed to be perfect, why is he killing two hundred thousand people and babies? If and you children take it in its own context, and mind you, we do believe that. How do you justify that with any kind of context, Juice? Killing a newborn baby. Juice, first off, what context justifies that? There is none. I don't think off, God kills first off, babies. First off, first off, I think he he's a baby killer. He's first a baby off, killer. One hundred percent, God's a baby killer. The first eleven chapters of Genesis, we know, is predominantly allegorical. All right. So, Why are you saying it's the Mesopotamia area then? Because the first eleven chapters were written later, anyhow. Probably during the Babylonian exile, and then you are using. Then why did God turn? Why did God turn, turn, turn that woman to salt for turning around and looking? That's stupid. Because that's they, not perfect. That's something an obnoxious two-year-old would do. They, a, a, an obnoxious two-year-old would turn his imaginary enemy and action figures into salt for turning around. That's stupid. He's not perfect. If God exists, he's far from perfect, and okay. he should be. He's garbage. First off, first off. If God was perfect, he should have stopped the Holocaust. Hold on. There hold shouldn't on. be pain. Yeah, hold stupid. on. Wait, 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 wait. What's wait. going on? Back this What's up. That? Sorry, back this up. Back you guys want to get a room for yourselves? Back this up. <laughs> he did not change her to salt. Yeah, he did. Nope, nope. It was a statue nope, of salt. Nope, nope. You're Go like, back. turn to context. Go it back. was actually pepper. Nope. Yeah. Hey, your, your Freemasonic Bible's right there, actually. That would have been much more delicious. But it's pink Kimmel and salt. I, I actually really Jake. like... <laughs> I kosher. love... I love... You can wash your hands with it. I jokes, love pink jokes. Mediterranean salt. That I was really compassionate. do. But <laughs> if you look back... He expressly said, "Do not look back because this will happen." He and she's warned now available them. At Bed Bath he Beyond. warned them and said, "Whatever you do, don't look back." It's a stupid rule. No, it made no sense. No, it's not. It made it no does. sense. It does. Yes, it does. Why? Let's say that I tell my son, "Do not take this paper clip and shove it into the electrical outlet." Okay. If I turn around and I'm making him breakfast and he does it. 
He did not listen, and he suffered the consequences. No that, this, your argument is such right. garbage juice. He made it. He made it so that whatever nope. fire was burning that village, nope. he made it so it would turn you into salt. He nope. did that. It's not like he made a potion. He's like, well, shit. I hope he nobody literally it said, turn into salt. "Hey, whatever George, you're talking, what? you're talking you about this like Don't you actually back. think it happened." <laughs> Oh, no, I think it's so. That's funny. That's cute. <laughs> I'm talking about it because it's so clearly, it's so clearly stupid. But you say George it's is now a believer. I'm arguing. George, on of you guys. George believes. George, George believes. believes. George believes. <laughs> George. Um, um, no, like you, you saying I got fired up because you were saying God is perfect. Juice always likes to twist these things that are just obnoxious. He gave a warning. He said, "Do not do this." Juice, that is so stupid. That is so dumb. Really. That that's like the really? most. That, yeah. Right. What? I'm gonna make an explosion, but I'm gonna have okay. people that. What about people he wasn't communicating hey, with? What about people that were like across the road? Hey George. And we're looking at it. Hey George. Hey George. That's so stupid. Hey George. Don't even make a joke, George. Because you're so off with your argument. What I don't go through that red light. Do not do it, George. George, whatever you do, don't go through that red light. George, don't go through the red Juice, light. We're not talking about something objective here. We made a stupid rule. No, you literally are. Because if somebody says, do not do this, oh, this is- turned into a corpse. No. You are not warned. Same. Not the same. You are warned. Turning into salt is like a dumb magical thing that he added says, on. It could have been just a nuclear bomb. Do not bomb. do this. <laughs> no, Juice. Or something will happen. And you do it. That's not on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Juice, your god is garbage. If that's what he did, really, that's so obnoxious. Like, so, why would he do it? Like, what about? Wasn't there? Was there any neighborhood? Like, was there any neighborhoods nearby? Was there anybody like in the woods? Did they turn to salt? Apparently like, what not. About them? Apparently not. Yeah, right, Juice. You're and you believe that. I mean, maybe there's a squirrel or maybe a hedgehog. Yeah, what about the animals? Or... What about the animals? Did they look at it? Did they turn to salt? No. That's even you made that even better, Juice. What about the animals? Like anything with eyes were looking at the fire that was happening. Did they turn to salt? They all turned their head. No, they didn't, because God didn't communicate with them. <laughs> of course they did. No, they didn't. It says that in my translation. No, it, <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> I'm confiscating both of your beers. <laughs> <laughs> so again. If it says don't go through a red light because somebody's going to smash into you, he made an arbitrary rule to that fire. Maybe you don't want to go through the red light. It wouldn't be no. Listen, that's not the same. It is Your the metaphor same. is not the it's same. The it's identical. That would be like okay. Same it, that would be like hey, when you stop at the, listen, there's order to the red light. Okay? Yes, exactly. There's no order to not looking yes, at the there fire is. juice. No, I there is. The like, red light is a law. Is is a law. There's order to it. The yes, reason right. why you exactly. can run through that the, red light. You can God run through that red light. Not and to you look. Might live. It's right. th- his version of the red light. I would. Yeah. Uh, no, it's way off. I would. I would probably say that I would. Uh, it's a tough sell, and I would say that I would, is, I would agree with you guys if there were other examples of salt women. <laughs> right, <laughs> but there isn't. <laughs> no now, one else. Now hold salt. on, hold on. So it's like this: Chernobyl is happening behind you. You better <laughs> keep running in that direction. If you turn back around. Something's going to happen. I'm sorry. She turned around and looked at Chernobyl. It's the same thing. He made. I don't know. I wasn't there. He made an arbitrary rule. (laughs) He made an arbitrary rule. It's not arbitrary. If you say, I'm doing this thing, don't turn around. It's not arbitrary. You are literally saying, please don't do this or you'll die. And you do it. You go. If my kid throws a ball out on the street and I have told my kid, and they all know this, do not run the street, and they do, that's not my fault because they know you don't follow the, that ball on the street. No the, way. The, irrational, the, the irrationality of it is the salt piece. Is that What seems out of character for me is that, unless I'm wrong, unless he turned anyone else prior or after that into salt in the same way. All right, why her? Why at that moment? Why at that time? That's weird it, Thank you. it is a real i mean croon juice so i call him croon juice like the stuff that the old people <laughs> drink hilarious. mixed with crew. To, um this guy's so, so i just fun. call him it's croon hilarious. juice uh croon juice <laughs> Oh, this guy. <laughs> it is a real head scratcher. It is. Oh, it so is a real head scratcher. like it's totally because, normal. It's like, yeah, why not? <laughs> because what if you tell somebody it's going to happen? We do stuff all the time that God has told us through the commandments not to do. I we agree. do stuff all the time. And then we could just confess it and move, go on with the show. Yes. Uh, she didn't get that chance. Uh, I mean, he didn't tell us directly, but he told us through like commandments that we break that stuff all the yeah, time. Yeah, but he also didn't but, wipe out Cleveland. 
Yeah. It's not know. like he said, hey, Edward, don't turn around. I'm about to wipe out Cleveland. This might kill you. I mean, I mean, if he told me something directly, like God couldn't have I'd protected like, them from the, the hellfire that he was raining upon that town. He Perhaps not. No, he couldn't. You, it's such you're you are you are paragraph number no, one so no, hard right no, now. You're no. paragraphing number one so to hard be, right now. To be fair, all right. To be fair. He's, Which you, he's saying something smart. He's doing his British accent. You will only get that if you watch Letterkenny, BT dubs. So, <laughs> um, I am. Yes, it is funny. Now, to be fair, this applies predominantly because there's a lesson. So, if you look back and look at the lesson, she loved the monetary value of what she was leaving more than the righteousness of what Lot was running to. So there is, even if this story isn't true, there is intrinsically a value to the story. There's no value. Was this polemic? It could be. If you talk to, to Rabbi Wolpe, he would definitely say it was polemical. Because what he's trying to teach you is you need to run to the things that are promised to you spiritually, not look back at the monetary value that will drag your family down. Again, Robert, if you look, talk to Rabbi Wolpe over in New York, he would tell you this is polemical and it refers to a spiritual connotation. It doesn't refer to a literal connotation. So, I mean, read, read the next part of that. I mean, seriously, I hate her for having any kind of attachment to the home she was living in and the people that were also living in that area. Screw her for looking back. Again, now, if you go back to context. Well, I mean, that's tough. That's, that, that, that's really tough. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. If you go back to context, these people specifically wanted to have sexual relations because they knew they were angels as well. Well, he's and, fine giving up his daughters for it. So uh, right, I, hey, I am not saying he was a good dude. The dude was definitely, let's just say, not a manly man. Okay, that's also why I don't like Jacob. By the way, I'll put that out there. <laughs> I think Joseph's awesome. I think his son was fantastic. I have never liked Jacob. Anyway, right, so I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the second paragraph as Gumby requested so kindly. Many religion adherents have no problem understanding the irrationality of other beliefs, but are unable to apply the same logic in observing their own doctrine. Juice is also paragraph number two. Oh, my Lord. (laughs) Instead of every effort, (laughs) instead of every effort is made to justify why it is their and only their religion that is devoid of any fault, which was just clearly shown in Juice's argument. If there were to observe their own faith with the same set of scrutinizing eyes, I see you making fingers at me, Juice, through the mirror, you idiot. Um, if they were to observe their own faith with the same set of scrutinizing eyes, um, they see through the evaluating of others' faith, they would understand that many of us have already concluded all the other religion texts were written by people, not gods. They are the stories and traditions that were created in order to explain our world in the past. I don't fully agree with that. Hmm. What? I don't. Dude, you are so... Nope. You are the first to knock on Jehovah Witnesses. You are the first now, to hold knock. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a difference. Evangelicals. Jehovah's you're Witnesses. You're quick to knock on other hold on, religions. Hold on, hold on. Jehovah's Witnesses are definitely the Kmart version of Christianity. But are they officially Christians? By the way, I no, keep hearing that they're not. They're, but they're, they try to say they are. They're not because you have to believe in the Trinity to believe to be Christian. And they do not believe in the they Trinity. They do not. No. It's weird that they say they're Christians. I know it is. All right. Yeah. Um, but I hmm. do not fully concur with that because I would not say that a lot of the uh, Islamist people I know are wrong. What? The I, parts I, that are also in the uh, Christian Bible? You're like, well, I believe that. Most of our the others is <laughs> You're like, the other stuff that is not no, mine no. is Because <laughs> our other religious friend most, that we talk about almost, sometimes, he'll, he'll say the same thing. Almost all of our... When Jesus showed up almost, in their Bible, they're like, yeah. Well, but I'm thinking, all of, of our, course you're going to think that your religion is the truth. I mean, almost all because of our religions are... Because if you don't, then why not are... be the next religion? And if you don't believe that one's the truth, then well, why not be the other one? But the other there, one. Or then why not just be nothing? There's a difference, of though. Of course so you have to believe it's... I true. believe well, that we have a clear... Why pick a team? I, I asked you about this, Juice, when you picked Catholicism. Why pick a team? Why not just find your own spirituality? 
uh, there's a multitude of reasons. We'll get into that. <laughs> but I think it's a good question. And maybe I that is believe, what most closely uh, aligns I, with his own spiritual. I do believe that others do have truth. I don't believe that the exclusion of all other religions is where you find truth in Catholicism. Mm. I do believe that Buddhists have truth. I do believe that Muslims have truth. I do believe Taoists have truth. So I, I do not say that they don't. In fact, the catechism itself does not say they don't. I believe that they have. I believe Socrates and Plato had fantastic, beautiful, you know, universal truth. I really do. Um, I, I don't think that we are exclusively those who have truth. I believe that God has visited every culture the way he best could. I believe we have a clear lens to who he is. And I believe that manifests itself through today, even through the Marian apparitions, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I do not believe that ex truth is exclusive to us. Does that help? I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I... That's kind of where my brain was going is that mm -hmm. I think it doesn't fully address this technically because mm -hmm. if you do agree that, you know, every, other religions have a segment of truth, yeah. it doesn't preclude you maybe what might be the issue with us thinking we have the whole truth. But at the same time, it greases the skids a lot, I think, of how do people of religion, of different religions, how do people with no religion interact with people, you know, with different views? Like, um, I, it just feels really pompous to say, like, I got the whole thing, you got nothing. There are a bunch of atheists, I think, that act more Christian than a lot of Christians. Thank you. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god, I the mean, children. But the children. <laughs> I said it over and over again. It was Taoism that led me back to Christianity. That tells me there's truth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think there I I've always thought I I won't say always, but for a long time I've always thought there was multiple pathways to the creator. Not just Christianity. <laughs> I'll take that back I like that notion <laughs> alright let's go number two number two coming up right now and go the promise of reward the faith of many followers hinges on the idea that there is some reward for devotion to their deity for the Islamic gentleman it is a promise of virgins after death for the Christian it is a perfect place of infinite peace and comfort for Hindus, it is the escaping of grueling tasks of re reincarnation, and for the Buddhists, it is reaching nirvana. How many of these same enthusiasts would subscribe to the religion if it were not for the reward of their commitment? And I'll just kind of stop there. I think that kind of does that. And I and I think uh, you know, Gummy, you were elaborating on this. I uh, and we the second time we mentioned them. You know, Jehovah Witnesses, where they think there's only room for a uh, hundred and. 60 144,000 144, yeah. and they're really competing for that 144,000 don't start yeah. me um, I think that's already full I think they're <laughs> I, 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 listen, I wanted to say that. I'm like, you don't think there's 144 people that are better than you? Well, you don't think so? No, but I think they know that it's already full and there there's some other I, I'm I'm ignorant on the subject. I do have uh neighbors that are Jehovah's Witnesses, so, but I'm ignorant on the subject. I think they think that there there uh is something else too. It's not just the 144 is heaven and that's uh, it i tried studying there's, up there, on there a little bit because i'm um my wife was born into religion but she never committed but her their family are like they're in they're in it jehovah's they're, witness yeah they're very serious Ouch. very serious that's why like sometimes like i, I bite my tongue i want to say here okay. i don't want them here because they, they'd be pissed i have a sister <laughs> um Ooh, and so uh, so but i wanted uh i uh wanted to learn more about what i was getting myself into because at first there was there was some friction um going on because uh by her marrying me um they wanted her to like get baptized in religion and commit to the religion and stuff like that that's something you have to kind of do like almost like a catholic baptism and then once you're in you're in then you get, you get excommunicated and stuff like that but by her marrying me that means like she would not be able to go to the religion essentially but are their pajamas as cool as, as scientologists I, it's and mormons, mormons. mormons. i was gonna say yeah. scientologists it's mormons have the pajamas yeah. But, so uh, you're saying according undercarmons. to her family, when she married you, there's no way she could make it into heaven, or whatever. That they they wouldn't. She wouldn't be able to commit to the religion unless they could also. 
which would make it into eternity ultimately right. so what they do uh, i'm just gonna jump around but yeah so essentially there was just a they knew by mary and me there would be a disconnection between a further like that was like a real nail in the coffin who they they thought there'd be like a grasp for her to come back and that was a real nail in the coffin by mm. mary and me but you have muscles right they didn't care at first they love me now <laughs> Oh, but I won't get too deep into it. I, I doubt they. Listen. I mean, you are kind of, I doubt they listen. You do have that rustic sexiness going on. You know, I do have a beard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know if I want to speak too confidently. What I do believe is, yeah, one hundred and forty-four thousand okay. will make it to heaven, and the rest of us will be here on like a piece on earth, reincarnated. Yeah, yeah like you were saying, there there is more to that. Yeah, so it's there like is. 40 144 get like they get, you know, you know that like that Delta room at the airport where they get the free booze. Mm-hmm. Right. 144 if it, if it make it that. short of that, I'd be okay. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of us kind of got to wait I'd in the lobby and buy our own drinks. I, <laughs> I actually get two passes a year to the United Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, I have no clue what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, reward, um, reward, reward, reward. Now, yeah, so, so, but I, I do want to point out, though, that since the start of the Jehovah's Witnesses, and we are doing an entire episode. <sighs> George, I want you to Dude. be on this. I want you to be on this. Yeah. We are doing an entire... Invite the family, George. Yes. <laughs> we are doing an entire episode on Jehovah's Witnesses. Are we going to And Scientologists. From those? And Mormons. I love Scientologist ideas because I could dog on them all day. So care. you love MLMs, huh? <laughs> What's an MLM? Multi-level marketing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you use essential oils? Like Amway? <laughs> <laughs> So, There's some great health curriculums out there for you. <laughs> uh, so let's go back and uh, going back to a story that I, I told before. You know, I told a story about Georgie. Um, Georgie held helped an elderly woman across the street, and you guys are like, uh-huh. "Wow, that's a really good deed by Georgie." And then you look back and you see Georgie winking at a beautiful woman. Okay, yeah. and okay. so we're saying that really makes you change your perception on the good deed. No. It's good that the good deed was done. Oh, hey, George. But it changes your perception on Georgie. I just thought about this, though. Okay. Who am I to connect those two things? Maybe he helped the woman, um, the old lady, get across the street. And then he saw the woman and winked at her. Maybe those are two separate things. What if you right, but later, okay, later you texted him because he's your buddy. Oh, okay. you text him. He's like, yeah, he did I had it to do because that I wanted. I was woman. trying to get some nookie, you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe the lady was your reward for being so good. <laughs> yeah. What if you helped her realize who her soulmate no, was? Georgie you. just helped this old lady. What if, like, instead of the seventy-two virgins, you just get the one? Perfect. Except she's probably not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so she was blonde. Dude. I, I don't know. She's just a woman on the street. We don't know. Hashtag we love yeah. and support all women. All right, women. We do. <laughs> Actually, we had an article we will not cover tonight on suppression of women because we believe in equal rights for all ladies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, not the Catholic Church. Yes, we do. Which except is, for being the except why? for being the pope. Which, which except is except for why? being the pope, you which don't, bro. Is why? So you don't, you don't, which is why, you don't. Oh. Which is why Mary is in charge of the entire church. No, wow. dude, you can't be a pope if you're a woman. So just simply because you're born a female, you cannot be the pope. You do not have equal rights for women as you do men. Is that true? What's that? Can a can a nope. female actually eventually nope. be a pope? No. Nope. No. Oh no! You have to be a priest to be a pope. Yes. And so you have to be a female to be a priest. No. You have to be a male to be a priest. Oh, yes. you can't even be a priest, bro. Do you have to be a priest to be the pope? I thought you didn't actually. Yes. You priest? don't have to be. I think don't it's there. You don't have to be a. Don't make dive him, too deep. There's don't make him get the numbers something. out. He'll get the numbers out. <laughs> 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 Number man over here. I'm gonna it. But to be honest, the church is predominantly ruled by ladies because really the Catholic priests. Church? Yeah, priests are actually the biggest servants of the church. They're not in they're not sincerely in charge of everything. It if you look at the actual structure of the church, schools, hospitals, they're all ran by ladies. Um the church itself is often ran by the administrator. So <laughs> I mean, yes. We try to give a good place to the father of the church, but the fa- his responsibility is to be the biggest 
servant in okay. the church. So maybe not right now, but could a woman ever be the pope? No, not at this time. And it never. Yeah. To, the pope to, to is your not point, able George. to change those type of things. Dogma is dogma. And honestly, it goes back to the start of the church and the reason why. And this was pointed out, by the way, Lizzie answers a lady. This was pointed out by her. Um, the reason why is because for some reason, when Jesus created the priestly archetype, he used only his disciples that were male. Even though Jesus Christ himself was the supreme feminist, um, he really wasn't. He just time. happened to not be around at that moment. Yeah. But... <laughs> if you look at what he did, he did set ladies up in a very beautiful place across the Catholic Church because they're the ones that teach everybody. They're the ones that actually run everything behind the scenes, and Mary herself is the one that's in charge of the church. So, you know, I mean, Christ is the so I'm high confused priest. by that when you say in charge of the church because then... So what role is the Pope, then, if Mary's in charge of the church? Mary's—the Pope also answers to Mary. So Mary is in charge of all Christians. Let's put it that way. So if you go back to uh, Revelation 12, it says that all those who follow Christ and all those who follow his ways are the children of— Did you just say the Pope answers to Mary? Yeah. Would it be accurate to say that Mary is the queen and the Pope is the prime minister? No, I would say that he's the vicar of Christ, but Christ is in charge of the church. But semitically, the queen is always his mother. Semitically, it's not his wife, because the king often had multiple wives. And so if you look look back at, like, King David, if you look back at Saul... So it's a type of monarchy. The mother was the queen, not his wife. So, in fact, if you go back, to, go back to Solomon, okay, Solomon, when they wanted to get something passed over to the king, they would talk to his mother, Bathsheba, in order to get it passed over to Solomon. So, the queen in the Old Testament is the king's mother. And so that parlays as an archetype into the New Testament. And Mary according to Revelation 12, is crowned queen of heaven. And all those who follow the Christ com- Christ's commands are her children. That's right in Revelation 12. I'm falling asleep. Yeah. So wait, that would mean like Mary, Jesus is, a, God is the king, Mary's the queen, and the Pope is the Duke of Edinburgh? <laughs> Ooh. That was a good historical moment right there. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so the Pope is the vicar of Christ. He stands in place of Christ while Christ is you know, seated next to the Father on the, at the right hand, right? So he is the vicar of Christ. So he is the second in command. That parlays all the way back to the Old Testament again, right? Because the keys of the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom are, are handed over to the second in charge, just like they were handed over to Peter, in the New Testament, when Jesus Christ says he's going away, but before he does that, he says he gives the keys of the kingdom to Peter. Peter is the first pope. And so that translates forward all the way to now. So the pope is in place of his responsibility. He's taking charge of the earth in the place of Christ while Christ is in heaven. However, Christ is still the high priest of all mankind. But his mother would be the queen because he is king. I have a question. Oh, go ahead, Gilby. He would be king, but she's queen. Yes, because what, according, he be prince? according to the old no, according to the Old Testament, the king's mother was queen. Because the queen, there could only be one. That was his mother. A king may have, like Solomon, a thousand wives, right? But he only has one mother. A thousand wives? That sounds like a headache. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> that sounds mer- mer- It was mer- predominantly wife. political. Yeah. But, <laughs> but if you look at it semitically, the mother of the king is the one who's always called the queen. 
not his I wife. Know if I know if it wasn't until people. the queen passed away that his wife was called a queen. You know, it's what it's it's archetypal because remember, just like Augustine said, the Old Testament concealed is the New Testament revealed. Do you have an example of that? I'm not following. I just, Maybe it's because it's I, after 10. I, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I just gave one. So just like Solomon's mother was the queen, Jesus' mother is also the queen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's a tough sell. I would never even begin. That's to, because you're still Protestant. I would um, never begin to compare Solomon to Christ. But. Nobody would. Yeah. But it's an archetype. Does this graph make sense? Is that right? <laughs> bishop. The... Why is bishop above pope? That's what I don't get. Oh, that's... Okay, so that's because the pope does not have any more authority than any bishop. What's a bishop? A bishop is in charge of over a whole area. Like, we have Bishop a Perez diocese. over Cleveland. Okay. Okay. Well, or like believe Bishop it or not, T.D. Jakes, right? <laughs> no. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Just like... Because uh, he's not part of the historical body of Christ. Okay, my bad. So, just like... Um, so, believe it or not, the Pope, if he came to Cleveland, technically does not have more authority over Cleveland than Bishop Perez. Interesting. He has, odd. he has but higher... The he has, bishop answers... He has higher esteem. The bishop would answer to the pope. He does, because he has higher esteem, right. but he does not have higher authority. All right, so can... All bishops are considered to have the equal authority. Can a woman... Can a woman be a bishop? No. No. Right. Can, can a, a bishop be... be a can priest? a woman be the pope? No. You have no. Can a woman be a patriarch? Yes. It's well... weird that it's patriarch, hold on, hold on. and you're saying yes. Hold on. Patriarch meaning a saint, a saintly patriarch? Um, in regards to this graph that you said was okay. If it's a saint, yes. There are some saint, yes. Like, great woman saints. Yes. Right. Well, can a woman can, be a priest in the Catholic Church? No. no. Can they be a diocese bishop? No. no. Can they be an archbishop? No. no. Can they be a metropolitan? No. Can they be, it says primate, primates? No. I don't know what it is. I don't know. All right, we get, the point. Let's, we get the point. Let's hope she's not. What is not. the word? I don't know. I don't know. How, it says primates, but let's I don't hope, know what that is. Let's hope she's not a primate. <laughs> what is it? Primates? No, I think it is primate, isn't it? What primate. the f- No. <laughs> Primatis. Be ready to bleep this out. F*** you guys right now for laughing at me. It is primates. You're, you were making fun of me, and it says- I don't know. Does it say don't know. primates? What yeah, is that from? Yeah, it says P-R-I. We're looking at the Roman Catholic Church hierarchy. <laughs> And it's like Archbishop Metropolitan's Primates, P-R-I-M-A-T-S. Is that chimpanzee or a gorilla? <laughs> that's something we're going to have to ask primate. somebody. It's totally primate. Would be sad if... Doesn't lie. Uh, what is that? What is <laughs> a pr- I mean, it's another name for... Primates. Primates, is yes. Primates? Primates, yeah. I knew it was probably not pronounced primate. <laughs> so can they be cardinals? <laughs> no. Um... So you're saying they can be a patriarch. So what's a patriarch? So patriarch's not, different because you can have saintly patriarchs. Like they're saying patriarch as a uh, second in line to the pope. No. No. All right. No, so anything you're saying that it goes from a priest like even like a deacon that No, up there, to, now, uh, there can be deaconesses. We find our next episode, George. There can be a deaconess. All right. Let me wrap up I've my never point. Heard of this. So that I goes have, back to the start of the church. Okay. In the start of the church there was deaconesses. And that was part of the Amazon Synod, part of the Amazon yeah, it's Synod. now called Metro Health. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> so I have the Roman Catholic Church good. hierarchy. So I'm just, I'm arguing Juice's point. All right. All right. So Juice said, you know, he's trying to make it act like, um, like the church doesn't have a glass ceiling on women. <laughs> um, anyway, here's the Roman Catholic Church hierarchy that Juice took a quick glance at and appears to be legit, okay? So on top is that weird rule. It says the Pope and bishops, neither of which could be held by a female, okay? Then we got the patriarchs. Again, can't be held by a female. Major archbishops also can't be held by a female. Then we have cardinals underneath that, also can't be held by a female. Underneath there is the primates, primates, primates. I don't know the word, I'm sorry. Again, can't be held by a female. Next down is Metropolitans. At posi- the next lowest position also can't be held by female. After that is Archbishop is the next chain of command. Cannot be held by female. After that is uh, Dias- Diocesan Bishops. That sounds right. Cannot be held by a female. 
Um, after that is priest cannot be held by a female. So you're trying to give two, all this credit to women in the Catholic Church, but however, we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The top ten positions in the Roman Catholic Church hierarchy, it is not allowed for a woman to have one of those positions. You're kind of given the situation, it's like the lawyers are all men, but they're like, yeah, but Glenn, our secretary, she actually runs the place, right, guys? <laughs> like, they <Yeah>, don't. But- <laughs> it's 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 a male-driven thing. Women have no control okay. over anything. Where did Glenn anything. come from? <laughs> but what you're, what you're not looking at is that, so, yes, but... But men are the highest servants of the church. I know you're again. You're, you're, are, giving, you're giving. You're giving. You're giving Susan outside the secretary all this credit. Why has it got to be Susan though? Yeah, I mean, why? Because her name's Susan. Equal rights, right? Why? Her name is actually Susan. Okay. I'm all friends with her. That. That's why. Yeah. It's too late to but, argue with you. So, <laughs> so, uh, we got we got the point there on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but the problem is you're not looking at... The, the context? You're, the, you're going to do a paragraph number no, one right now? you're not looking at the female authorities behind the church because... I just looked are, at the top ten hierarchy, on. and they're all men. Oh, you're not allowed to be held by a woman. But you're looking at the priestly side of it. You're not looking at the other side of it. The so, secretaries. Not just secretaries. <laughs> teachers. Nuns. I mean, these people run entire <laughs> schools and areas, and I mean... The um, work. No. Yeah, it is. No. The nuns, dude. Shut up. I hate up. to tell you this, but... Shut but up. Is it, is it okay to say that when a lot of this stuff was written, was it written during a patriarchal society? 100%. Overall, oh, yeah. even outside of, of course religious was. or the church. Of course it was. And the it carried over. 2,000 years old, of course. And it carried over. Of course. But... Okay. I just feel like juice is in denial. I don't like I don't like that you're not really in the fess up for the Catholic Church's no, patriarchal system. Because our highest ranking person is a lady. Symbolically. Symbolically. symbolically but we answer to her. Dude. I mean symbolically. Mm. Symbolically, yes. But I mean We it, actually have some in the Protestant church story, I'm just saying. <laughs> Good. But at the same time, I mean I think God to be female. You're anyway. looking if you think that God has any sex at all, then you're a very small mind. Yeah, so, if God created like man in his image, he meant to do in women. If you think that God has a sex, then you are a very small-minded person. No. Now, if you think he's a male, I guess. We only use the term male because it's an why? You're archetype. sexist? That's all. You're sexist. You're we, sexist we language. Don't, listen, God does not have a sex, okay? All right, then God she. himself is beyond then we're just gonna, sex. All right, can you refer to her as a she then? No, because why not? God is beyond sex. Then why are you using he? Traditionally, it's what we use. All right, well, you should but, mix it up. <laughs> but, technically... We te- got the wrap it up sign from Gummy Bear. <laughs> I, I'm, usually that's me. <laughs> anyway, uh, you're looking at two different sides of the church. Oh, I'm sorry, no. I'm looking at two sides of the church. You're looking at one side of the church. I'm looking at the side that matters. So what you're, you're like, saying, oh my gosh, so you're we, gave, saying we gave Julie the uh, you're head saying that, of a... You're saying that females don't matter. Because, I'm saying your church does. Because there's a whole female ranked side of the church as well. You're only looking at one side of it. I'm looking from the Pope down and it's all men, bro. But you're it, only looking at one side. I'm looking, looking at the, at the Pope the down. I'm looking at the president But you're down. not looking at the female side of the church. Because there's two sides of the church. You're only looking at the female side of the church. I'm looking at the top. And it's men, dude. You're looking at the female side, or the, the, I'm sorry, the male side of the church. I'm looking at the Pope, who's the Mecca. But there's a, a ladies' side of the church as well. In the Catholic Church? Yeah. I mean, do, like what? Yes. What do they do? They run pretty much everything. No, they don't. Yes, they do. That's just like, yeah, Julie the Secretary actually runs, runs the place. Yeah, she does. So, I think there are some factions that are... are um, There's some, but proposing that we should actually name those positions a lot better than what we do, because you don't know them, because they well, don't know you. They don't do. They don't do anything. Here, here's the but issue on the do. Protestant side. Can can any? They're probably great people. They work hard, but they're not part of the hierarchy. They do not. Can you get to can, make can you name any priest in this last two generations that can outrank Mother Teresa? No, probably not. I think a lot. I think Mother Teresa has a lot of notoriety. I mean, one other one I bring up. I, um, 
Mother Angelica started Mother the Angel- biggest arm of the Catholic media that exists in the okay. history. So either one of those examples, could the top leadership in the Catholic Church or any Protestant church, the top leadership, which are all male, sit under their teaching? Nope. Wait, wait, hold on. Because every not, male not sits just, under their t- tutelage. Every male sits under their tutelage. Could, scripturally, if she was preaching out of the Bible, uh-huh. could the top leadership in any Catholic church or Protestant church sit under a woman's teaching? Nope. Yes, because almost all of our teachers You're are female. You're not supposed to. I thought the males are supposed to be the... Uh, I've never heard of that myself, personally, but... Yeah, they whole run whole schools and everything. I mean... Oh, for females? Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, they, they run whole I think schools. we overstate what a pope or a bishop can Thank teach you. that as novel. Yeah. Like, a, a pope can't just make up no. crap. <laughs> no. So, in a, in a broad sense, you know, a lot, if you're talking about, in you know, in what are people actually getting taught day to day, a tremendous amount of it is being taught by women, and the pope couldn't just say everything that woman says or any particular thing that woman says is invalid. Absolutely not. Yes. Uh, and, and actually, the whole bishop thing, like, the whole, like, Here's the Pope, but he's also a bishop, and well, here's the bishops, and they're equal to the Pope. That actually explains why we don't case, get a whole heck of a lot of stuff done, because <laughs> they're all equal. <laughs> in right. that case, I really learned something then, because I didn't know that there were women teachers in the Catholic Church. Absolutely. What did you say? I mean, we weren't supposed to go to the Amazon as on Sid, and I know one of the contentions of that is whether they would have a, a woman diaconate, and you know, it could go, you know, so a big discussion on that. But I, there is with. Let's various see. areas where there's a priest shortage, there actually are women administrators over individual parishes. Absolutely. Like in the case where a priest can only has like say three or four parishes that they have to deliver sacraments to, the women will actually run the day to day to that parish until and they find a man. So then, then it's an issue of right. equivalency. If they, then. So <laughs> if they do I, find a man, then the woman. I don't know about the Catholic maybe Church, not. but if a woman can teach on the Protestant side, a woman will have to go through every loop. And every every hurdle that a man has to go through no. on the Protestant side until the very end where a man can be ordained and a woman cannot. A she gets a different certificate. A large portion of our So is teachers, that the same on the Catholic Church? A large portion of, portion of our teachers are female. So I is mean, that the same on the Catholic Church at the end result of whatever a man goes through to become ordained to be one of the top leaders? Is that the same for a woman? They would never be, you know, instituting I mean, the same thing. You wouldn't, you wouldn't ordain a, so a the, woman a priest. So that's yeah. what George's point is. Right. Is that that issue of equivalency has not changed yet. But you have that on the nuns' side. So, because they separate those two. I, probably, and we don't really write, we don't explain it enough. I, I would but, contend there is still a gap. There are, are situations where we probably need to elevate the voice. We definitely need to elevate the voices of women. We're not doing it today. And I th- I think I can't quite imagine what it is, but I imagine we could come up with something with better than just saying they're ordained as priests. So it's an issue of terminology. I would say so. so. I, I would I would argue, and I would say that it's an issue of experience and leadership. If a woman is qualified scripturally and can have leadership qualities just as much as a man or any priest or any pastor in the Protestant world, I would I have no problem submitting. Under her leadership. Catholicism does, though. It, well, neither does the Protestant church. There's many areas of the Protestant church where it's completely patriarchal. We, we, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to throw the Catholic church under the bus. I, believe me, I will throw ours right under with it, too, wow. and say that there's a lot of room for growth. Same could be because said for there, the secular side, There's probably too. a lot of positions in the Catholic church today where they're only given to bishops that don't actually have to be given to bishops and probably could be given to very qualified, much more qualified men and women that aren't bishops. But there's kind of like a thing where in order to get into a certain circle in the Vatican, you already just happen to be a bishop. And I think that's a huge gap that I think some people are starting to bring to light that needs to be addressed. I mean, you just think of really obvious stuff that sure screws up with, like say like social media and marketing. And very obviously you could probably find someone much more qualified that would do a much better job that isn't holding one of those titles today. But in the same token, again, you're really not going to recognize the gap. You're not going to do it. <laughs> Could you sit under a Sunday mass under a female? That's not going to happen. <laughs> Weird. And, Weird. And now, here's the thing, though. But there's no gap, guys. Here's the thing. Well, here's the thing. Just say there's a gap. Just say there's a gap. <laughs> no. 
The thing is, is that quit it. You just do, say there's a gap. So you do see both Listen, sides. Listen, you don't of have it. to agree with everything that the Catholic Church does. Just admit there's a gap. Just say there's a gap, dude. I would say there's a cultural difference between what you're looking at. No, 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 no. Do you foresee any change in the future? Do you think that there could be because of cultural influence or the way that outside of religious influence Dogma's is changing? Dogma is not going to change. Mm-hmm. Dogma itself is not going to change. I would say there would have to be a study on what the dogma is teaching. But the dogma itself is not going to change. This is where I feel like the Protestant side of things um, may be looked down upon maybe by the Catholic Church because we are caving in, right? Because there are, we are starting to say, hey, you know what? Actually, this woman knows the scripture better than I do. But that's She's a, a better teacher. She has better leadership qualities. Yeah, go ahead. Do but it. But that's a problem. Because when you raise scripture above good teaching, that's a problem. Because scripture is no, no, no. I mean, all the qualities. It's all there. Oh, okay. Oh, it's it's all just, there. okay. So, all right, all right. So you're reestablishing. <laughs> <laughs> if all those ducks are in order, I would what's say the that. Then? I would say that historically, there's two different sides to that. So we do have we do have ladies like Mother Angelica. Um, we do have ladies who are established even above bishops as far as their teaching goes. Um, many times, actually. Mm. Not just those two, but many times. Um, good teaching is good teaching, and a saint is a saint. It doesn't matter if it's a male or a female. That being said, maybe there does need to be more terminology in place to distinguish that. I, I would say there is a gap, but saying the gap has to be addressed by putting women in the priesthood is a very narrow way to look at addressing the gap. Like a priest, just giving them access to being a diocesan priest, yeah. it doesn't really address no. really any of that in terms of actually upper leadership. It's it, Being a priest is actually a pretty thankless job. I mean, you, you can't you. even really call it a job. It's a vocation where you say mass whether there's a hundred people there or just yourself that's yeah. really at the end of the day all it is i could see that but let's say for every again. let's say for every priest and every protestant pastor who has brought um sin into their role whether it's you know on the catholic side you know a lot of the sexual stuff that was been thrown about in the news what if what if a female was put in place of that Instead of that priest, and we well, we'd rather go with the priest because he's still male, versus giving a woman a shot, even though she believes and she can teach and she has just as much as experience has gone through just as much schooling as that priest a chance. But in many places, they are given more esteem, and that's that's what. So, and, and I think this is where th- there's a fallout because people are looking at this is the church hierarchy. So this is where it's at. But everybody forgets that all of your education and everything is handled through women. Everything. Like, like the priest is the biggest servant in the church. He seriously is. He will often cater to whatever the nuns say because the nuns are the ones running the schools. The nuns are the run, ones running like, everything. Oh, I hate so, that argument, Juice. Again, you're talking I, about Julie outside. She's the one that really runs the place. Like He's a leader of the church. But he's also the biggest servant of the church. I know, Juice. I, you and me are leaders, but we're also servants to our staff. I get what you're saying, but they're not. our staff is not above us in the hierarchy. Yeah, they have an important role. I hate your argument right now. Like you may hate it, but no, it's not good. This might need to be not. continued. Yeah, I'm ready to wrap it up. <laughs> Someone well, might have turned Jesus this off. Jesus is the high priest right of our now. church. I'm just saying. Well, Jesus is the high priest of our church. <laughs> Can I throw something out about uh, not to totally shift gears, but about the original George's original example of the hypothetical George helping yeah. the old lady and then winking at the hot woman? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I finally figured out what. At least in my mind, is we're starting another fifteen minute conversation. The weird part about that, or the part that seems off, it's the winking back, isn't just acknowledging your motive. It's literally lording power over somebody else. It's taking your deed and using it to exert power over somebody. 
And that's the exact same way I feel when I think of somebody saying, I did this great thing because God told me to, or because, you know, it will get me to heaven. It's literally saying like, you can't judge this good thing I did at all because God is on my side. And if you're judging me, you're judging God. So this is why I don't really care what someone's actual motivation is. Like whatever makes you take internally on that, great. But the moment you spit it out there and you you say it in a way that indicates you are exerting, you're exerting power over somebody. I think that's where it goes wrong. Yeah, exerting I, power. In, you know, I again, I just in uh, every case of winking, or just in that case of winking. That particular <laughs> case, I mean, if you <laughs> just well, winking generally winking. I mean, winking at women. I mean, it's, a, it's really cliche, and <laughs> b, I mean, I'm bringing it back. I can't think of a great reason to do it unless like the woman clearly knows his tongue in cheek. Like, I just winked at my friend today in church. <laughs> you know, a male, a yeah, guy, yeah. guy friend. So to me, it's an issue of communicating. Which is what I thought of him and her. I thought it was an issue of communicating to her, like, hey, I noticed you, hoping you noticed me, kind of thing. Did you notice me help this lady? I keep I really at you. want well, you to, to get you to wink back. I really Maybe. want you to notice me. There's gonna be a long follow up conversation of all the clarify but the nature know, of the winking. <laughs> that's, I, I honestly didn't think it was an issue of you trying to control her. Again, I just think it's a stronger thing if it came in from inside because you thought it was the right thing to do rather than doing it for the sake of reward, is my point. Yeah. I still think the structure still a structure. Oh, I was trying to wrap it so, up. Anyway. <laughs> I know. I just throw it out there. It, we we got to do a whole topical episode on this. On Definitely. On winking? We have to. Yeah. <laughs> on winking for sure because I, I there's so many so nuances sure. to it. <laughs> I think we should get people from the church. I think we need to bring. I, I think we need to bring women in. Yeah, I agree. I think we I need think to bring we should have in. a woman, one hundred percent. My wife would absolutely have some things to say about it, and you know, and, and in light of the recent issues in the Protestant side between John MacArthur, one our one of our greatest theologians of the time, authors at the time, very influential among the evangelical world, ardent supportant of Trump. And his influence he's had over women and his spat with another female pastor, Beth Moore. I think it's a very relevant subject to talk about. You know? Why? There's no gap. You're just looking at half. There's a gap with her. I mean, no. she, her mm-hmm. authority lies no. with you. You're looking at just one half. No, no, no. There's two halves. Her authority lies with Christ, not with Paul. So I think it's a very uh, relevant to tie, uh, issue to talk about. Mm-hmm. No, I'm with you. I'm just pulling juices. Move. What's uh? <laughs> what's that? Uh, who's that crazy woman for Trump who like just <laughs> like she'll say anything on TV for money. She'll oh, spin anything. She's crazy. Oh. Kellyanne Conway. Yeah, <laughs> I love her. Oh my gosh, that girl's awesome. Like I wish like you want her on your side. If something goes bad, you want her being your person on the news. But that's juice right now with the with the uh, gender gap issue. He's like he's just spinning it like. I mean, you're you're talking about something that's like fifty years oh, it's the of politics versus like thousands of years of evolution and formation. I'm really and, not. I'm gonna. But I'm, you really are. I'm ready. You really are. I'm gonna do some hard you're research. I'm gonna get like the legitimate piece hierarchy. Of history. This I'm tiny gonna get the legitimate piece of hierarchy, dude. It's all male, all male. So, it's all male all the time. This Genesis tiny is little male. Piece like of it's, history. It, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 Eve who picked the, the apple. Like, so let me ask you, then. it's what the woman is, that turned around. What is the end? What 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 would be the end goal for you? What would be like? Okay, we finally made it in terms of women in the church, or in, in, would you rather them just one hundred percent the same opportunities as male? Okay, but would you rather them just completely throw everything with the church out? Yeah. Or would you rather have them see them reform the church, rehabilitate the church, in your view, and rise to the top? Why would they want to do that within a church that doesn't want them? I think I think they need to do some, I don't know, soul searching and just realize, like, why are we doing this? But let's say your view is correct, right? Why would a woman want to rehabilitate a church that doesn't want them? No, well, I feel what you're saying. I feel what you're saying. I mean, that would be huge if they were to be like, if, I don't know. That would be huge for them to acknowledge that, you know, yes, these women deserve the same opportunities as the men in our religion. And that would be nice. But 
Think about that. Think about a relationship where it's like, man, this person hasn't wanted me for years. Again, I why am I going to force that person to want to want me? Why do I want that? Again, I I think you're looking at two different sides of it. Lord Juice, I just Pope don't even know where you're coming from. The Pope himself bowed to Mother Teresa. So again, I don't think you're looking at things in the same aspect. Juice, you're the only person. All right, I don't care. I'm calling it. And with that said, I'm George. (laughs) (laughs) Thank God, thank Allah, and hail Satan. And to my right, Edward. Yes, goodbye, everyone. Good night. (laughs) Keith, take care, wink appropriately. (laughs) There's nothing taboo except a lot of taboo things we talked about over (laughs) brew. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon. Please donate so we can keep bringing you this wonderful content. You can also donate to us on anchor.fm slash Bible of a Bruise. Please. Thank you. You can also find us on like virtually every single platform, including Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and wherever else you find social media. Have a good night. Peace. Fanny. Adios. Bye.